Steve, and today I'm going to be explaining how to make uh, cement bonsai pots like this one here. Hope you can see it okay. And uh, a boiler and wash off. This is one I made yesterday. I'm going to make another one today. This is one I made a few days ago. I haven't uh, put the um, sealer on yet to make them glossy. It's wet at the moment. But uh, you can see the profile there. Hopefully, I hope the video quality is okay for you. When it's uh, sealed with a gloss sealer, it's very nice. Wall thickness is about half inch, just over one centimeter, maybe 15 millimeter. Not too heavy. I haven't put the holes in the bottom yet. When I have time, I'll just drill some hole in the bottom. Okay, so let's get started. First thing you're going to need is an inside form. <coughs> I like to use a plastic box because it's easier to remove. Got a big hole out of the top because it makes the top easier to remove. Now the first thing you have to do is when you buy your plastic box, make sure that there's nothing protruding out of the sides that is going to make a, uh, make it difficult to remove uh, from the uh, from the concrete because all they're going to do is they're going to cover this in concrete obviously this is going to be the inside shape of your box and um, the reason I have this black neoprene ring around here is to modify the shape a little bit this is a cutter I'm going to be using here to produce the uh, shape I want and if I hold this up to here you will see you'll see that I need, I want to basically try and model that shape as reasonably closely as possible. Now the wall thickness, as I said, is going to be about 15 millimeter, about half inch. So it's going to be about there. So I just use a little bit of neoprene here to uh, pad that out and just tape it on. And a little bit of plywood on here is because there's kind of a rim, plastic rim on the back here. And it's, it's just basically about trying to get a better shape. So the next thing you're going to need is a piece of plywood, which I have here. I already cut this. Obviously, I'm going to start with just a plain old flat piece of plywood. <coughs> what I want to do is take. You always definitely want to get a box with a top. The top is very important because that's used as a guide. And then what I did, I've done it already. Basically, I marked one and two. One and two. What I did is I, I put this down in the center of my plywood. I drilled some holes. I put a couple of screws in as locator pins. I lock the heads off the screws so it's easy to take on and off. And I've got one and two, so I know which way it goes. Then when I did that, and then I put my box together, and then I took a scrap piece of wood, which I can't find right now, but I'll show you get the idea. And then I went around and I marked a line like this, not this line, obviously, but carefully, not like this. Carefully, I went around and I marked that line like this. Then, using my saw, I cut around here, and then using the sander, I made this edges nice like this. So, I got this base here, which follows the perimeter of my plastic box perfectly. Okay. And then, what this is going to do is when I'm going to be doing my final shape, and I'm going to be using my cutter, which is uh, this guy, I already showed you, and I'm going to use this to get the shape I want. And hopefully you can see, that's going to give me my wall thickness that I want, it's about half inch, right, as I come around. later on. The first step is to make the inner core, I call it. And the first thing I do is, working on this plywood is not very good. I should have got some laminated plywood that I didn't. So what I did is I just took a piece of core mica and uh, put it in there. I didn't cut it particularly well, but it doesn't really matter. Just make sure your one and your two are lined up so you, you know you're in the exact center. This is two over here. So, my next 
next job is I want to get ready to make my inner core, which is going to be fiberglass reinforced cement. Okay, so I've got some uh, fiberglass tape that is used for sheetrock and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, doesn't really matter which way you're doing, it's a system of doing the long way first, and I go over the sides, but not all the way to the bottom, I stop about half inch short at the bottom. Okay. So I'm basically just, I'm, I'm pre-cutting my strips now, it's much easier to do work now, but you do it when you've got next to concrete and everything, if you don't, concrete is the wrong word, it's cement, uh, there's no sand and there's no uh, rock in what I do, it's just 100% cement render some So I basically cut my fiberglass strips to the right size. Try to put my finger off. Doesn't matter how beautiful it is. This is just a reinforcement. Shit, I've run out of tape. Okay, I'm back with more tape. Uh, definitely a good idea to cut the tape first because you don't want to run out of the start putting some in. Okay, so I've gone across uh, lengthways, widthways, now I want to go around. But I don't go around in one piece. Uh, I go, uh, I overlap about uh, two inches, something like that. Take it all off, but keep the pieces separate and in order so you know what order they should go back on. So this is the outer perimeter, this is going to be the last thing. And then this is the, uh, going to be the first thing. this box with uh, clean fill it makes it much easier for removing it after you've done all the cementing. So uh, So you know, box is now covered in uh, clay film. This is my number two corner here. Okay. Okay, so that's on now. Next job is to mix the cement. Step. We're going to be mixing the uh, cement that we're going to use. Uh, I know about how much to use because I've done this before. I usually like to mix the cement into the water, so you know how you do it. Uh, very important though is I always use plasticizer. Uh, I use about 20%. So here I got about an inch of water or so. I'm going to put about a quarter inch plasticizer in there. I don't measure anything, I probably figure this out by the end of these videos. I just guess, mostly. Okay, so the plasticizer is very important. It um, stops it cracking when it dries, makes it more workable, makes it waterproof, makes it stronger. Definitely, I highly recommend using it. And my cement is just normal, 
uh, 100% uh, render cement, no sand, no nothing. And I just spoon it in, trowel it in. Until it's uh, pretty much consumed all the water. You're looking for a pretty dry mix here. You want this to stay in place. You don't want it running around. I mix it with my hands. Obviously with clothes on. I find it's the best way to be sure that you don't have any, uh, any uh, dry bits, any button blobs of uh, unmixed. And also it gives you a chance to feel the consistency. Using all the blocks that I found out here, to make it more smooth consistency, more consistent. And it feels pretty good, it feels definitely like put that somewhere, it's not gonna move. Look at that, and it's basically holding upside down and it's so um, sticky. So that's a pretty good. basically the reinforcing core of the thing. This gives it the strength. Because the second part we're going to do tomorrow, after this is dry, is um, it's going to have color mixed in, like the color additive into the cement. And I think that it, doesn't, it really messes with the uh, strength of the cement. It's not, not as strong. So by doing just the natural gray cement for the inner core, which you're never going to see anyway, uh, unless the point is empty, <coughs> basically you're not going to see it when it's in use, then, you know, it's, I think it's a better way to go. Okay, so my, I'm pretty happy with that. Move this out of the way. Move this back. There's a camera view. Okay, now I'm going to basically try and create a layer of about a quarter inch thickness. So this is obviously not right yet. Okay. Try and get it fairly 
well balanced, left to the right. Don't go over the corner like that. It doesn't. It just doesn't sit right. I think I think it's better to stay a little bit inside the corner. These are formica covered plywood. Um, formica is great because it, nothing really sticks to it, so uh, it releases very easily from the cement. Okay, so I'm just going to go there. You 
slide it up rather than pull it away. Okay, now you can see you've got a pretty nice little shape there. That's really all I need to do for now. But one last little thing is I'd like to find my uh, okay, so this is my cutter here. So ultimately I'm going to use the shape in the final product. I just want to run it around like this. And I just want to check angle this towards the camera a bit. I just want to check that I have good clearance. And uh, you can see around here I actually don't have very good clearance. I'm not going to worry about that now. I'm going to deal with that later. But using this, you know, you can, uh, on, the, on the table, not held up like I am, you can uh, check that your inner core is not too big for your outer core. Frankly, it's not important to do that right now. It's better that you leave this for about two, three, maybe four, I mean, three hours probably. And uh, we come back and kind of pretty it up once it's dried up a little bit. So all I'm going to do right now is put a plastic bag over it. I can find the plastic bag uh, to stop it drying out too fast. Uh, and then I'm going to leave it for three or four hours. In about uh, three hours, maybe two hours. I could leave it a little bit longer, but Effect. So, um, okay, so here we go. As you can see, it's still pretty soft, but it's firm enough not to uh, go anywhere. So, first thing is, I want to uh, explain. Now this is a piece of uh, stainless steel, um, just a scrap stainless, and I marked out the shape I wanted, and uh, I just used the angle grinder to cut the rough shape, and then I used the uh, belt sander to get the fine shape, and I want a little like bottom lip. This little thing here, this little bottom lip on there, and then you need uh, basically to be able to hold it in a horizontal position, like a sort of vertical position, like this. Uh, so you don't mind moving around this way, you like moving that way. You want to maintain the angle. So I put a piece of uh, plywood on the back here, another one here. And then another one here, and this distance obviously here is critical. The distance between there and there determines your wall thickness uh, here. As you can see, I hope, from that picture there. Now what I'm going to do now is I want to go around, and I want to verify that I've got a reasonable clearance between the cutter and here. Definitely do not want it touching. Uh, so I want about five, five to eight millimeters, so about quarter of an inch of clearance between the cutter and the uh, and the raw concrete here, the raw cement here. So I'm just going to carefully go down. You're not really going to see this because of the camera angle. I don't really feel like moving the camera right now. But I'm just going to go down there. And okay, I've got uh, obviously there's a bit here which is not quite right. So I'm just going to. Go ahead and chop that up. This is a little bit soft. It wouldn't hurt to leave this a little bit longer. <coughs> I'm kind of busy. I want to get on with another job, so I'm going to do this now. Okay, so I'm carefully going down here. Now, I'm seeing that I'm touching all the way along the bottom here, but that's not particularly important because I'm going to cut that off anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to use a piece of plywood as a guide. Put all the way through, all the way to the plastic box, and then I'm just going to break that away. And I want to verify that I can actually see the 
plastic box in that. I don't want any cement at all down here. Thank you. 